Anytime we get into farming activities, we do so knowing that at the back of our minds, we are bound to make an extra coin that will help improve on our livelihoods back at home. But as we walk that farming journey, we experience challenges. And some of these challenges are issues or problems that we could sort out if we had the know-how. Today, I want us to learn about biosecurity in poultry farming and the measures to take for a productive farm. Whatever we learn throughout the course is also applicable in other livestock sectors as well, not just the poultry. My name is Saida Karanja and I'm going to be a course instructor for the day. I'm a trained animal health technician, having graduated from Ahiti Nyahururu in the years back, and I also hold a bachelor's degree in business administration, supply chain option. I have worked with farmers for the last 10 years in different aspects of production systems and management, and as well as the pharmaceutical supply in the livestock sector. Welcome to the course. Our course outline for today, we're going to look at what is biosecurity and what are the objectives of biosecurity. We're going to look at disease transmission on the farm and how this affects the production that we are in. We're also going to look at the steps we're going to take to achieve biosecurity in our farms. We're also going to get more advice and other suggestions of how we can do better in regards to biosecurity and our farming production systems. What is biosecurity? What comes to mind when we hear of the term biosecurity? Biosecurity is a set of management practices that when followed collectively, reduce the likelihood of introducing or spreading disease-causing organisms onto and between different poultry sites. It can also be defined as a defensive health plan and hygienic procedure that can help keep your farm disease free and in turn your profits high. We've talked about sets of management practices. These include things like a number of visitors coming to our farm, isolation, sanitization and disinfection, and so many others that we shall discuss as we progress with the cause. We find that most infectious agents, that is the bacteria, the viruses, and the parasites, will enter the chicken through the beak, especially when they are eating and drinking, or even breathing. The agent will then multiply within the chicken and may spread or rather cause damage to specific organs, which then results to the clinical signs that we observe when a bird is unwell. Let's give a classic example. You go to a friend's farm and they're generous enough to give you a cock or two or even a hen to go back home with. But we don't get to ask about the history of whether this bird had been vaccinated, what challenges it had gone through, but because we're so happy, we take the bird with us home. We get home and we just mix the bird with our existing flock, which happens to be very young. In a few weeks, we notice that our younger chicks, or other birds, are not looking so well. Something is not right. You're seeing ruffled feathers, you're seeing lesions, you're seeing scabs, and you're like, what could be going on? My flock was okay. But then, two or three weeks ago, you introduced a stranger in the flock that was carrying a disease that you didn't know. And that is how we end up introducing a disease to the existing flock, and we end up getting into losses and challenges. When you bring a bird home, you may not be able to tell if it's sick or not because it could be incubating the disease. And by incubation we mean it is already shedding the viruses or the bacteria in the environment. 
but we cannot see it. The disease is there, but we, can, we are yet to see the clinical signs take place. But in two to three weeks, then we're able to observe and see something is not right. What it means is that infectious agents will be spreading and causing diseases across the farm even before we are able to see the clinical signs of the disease. Now that we understand what is biosecurity, then what are the objectives of biosecurity in the farm? The main objective of biosecurity is to keep the infection pressure at the farm as low as possible. This way, the immune systems of animals will be less stressed, resulting in lower risk of disease outbreak and consequently better animal health, welfare and production. Hygiene, or rather what we refer to as cleanliness at your farm, is the most effective form of protection against any form of disease, especially for poultry under modern production techniques. Biosecurity holds the key to success in profitable farming. Poultry and all other farm animals must have an environment in which disease and infections are controlled to the point where vaccination and medication achieve beneficial effects. The number one reason why some farmers fail is that they do not adhere to proper biosecurity measures. If we put in place biosecurity measures as advised, then we can be sure that we are cutting down also on the cost of production. We shall reap good harvest out of our systems and whatever venture that we get into. Cleanliness or hygiene, biosecurity is everything for you in a farm. For you as a farmer, biosecurity is your best friend. It's the one thing that will make you prosper and become a better and more productive farmer. Now that we understand what is biosecurity and what are the objectives of biosecurity, then let's look at how diseases are transmitted on the farm. Animals can get exposed to diseases from a variety of sources. Most occur between the animals themselves but the transfer can also occur from the environment, such as soil, water, or even feed. Some diseases can also be transferred from people on the farm. For example, the farm hands. As we can see in our diagram of how the movement of people from point A to point B, or movement of even vehicles when they are visiting different farms, use of equipment, and so much more is explained by the diagram that we have. Regardless of the source, animal diseases like human diseases are spread or transmitted in various ways. This will vary with the disease of concern. We are going to look at five main routes of disease transmission, and these include direct contact, inhalation of aerosols, ingestion, indirect transfer by formites such as equipment, footwear or vehicles, or vector transmission. Direct contact. Direct contact is one of the main methods of disease spread between animals. It occurs when a susceptible animal comes in direct contact with an infected animal via its body fluids or tissues. Depending on the microorganism involved, it may be transferred directly by blood, saliva, urine, or feces. It may also spread through contact with infected animal lesions or tissues. Entry into the susceptible animal generally occurs through contact with the mucous membrane, such as the eyes, the nose, or the mouth. Aerosol transmission. This is another means of disease spread. 
and it involves the transfer of disease agents in droplets spread through the air which are then inhaled by another animal. Oral transmission of disease-causing organisms involves the ingestion through the consumption of contaminated feed or water or licking or rather chewing on contaminated env environmental objects. Feed and water contaminated with feces, urine or saliva are frequently the cause of oral transmission of disease agents. Fecal oral transmission of disease is a common means of infection in animals and even in human beings as well. Shared feed and water sources can contribute to the spread of the disease. Indirect transmission, and this one occurs by formites. What are formites, if you may ask? These are inanimate objects such as equipment, clothing, footwear, or vehicles that can transfer microorganisms from one infected animal or area to another animal or person that was not infected. Examples of formites that may be present during a response will include things like needles that are used for vaccination or treatment, Bowling guns that are used to dispense medication to cattle, feed or water buckets, beddings, shovels, and so many other items that are used in the farm. Even items such as clothing or vehicles may become contaminated and serve to spread pathogens, and especially vehicles as they move from one farm to the other doing deliveries, especially like for feeds, and more so in larger commercial production systems. Vector transmission. This involves living organisms being able to transfer microorganisms from one infected animal to one that is not infected. For example, mosquitoes, ticks, biting minges and flies are common disease carrying vectors in our farms. But sometimes even rodents or birds can serve as disease vectors as well. For example, your farm may not be well fenced and that of your neighbor and the next neighbor. And that means rodents or other rats can move in from one farm to the other and help in spreading diseases. And you may not know this because it's usually a very annoyingly kind of thing that happens.